<laughs> what just happened? I don't know. Um, Sylvester Stallone knows my name. Your name has never sounded cooler. Sly Stallone guest stars, Randall and Beth meet their new foster child, and once again, little Annie steals the show on this week's This Is Us. Let's break it down right here on What Happened. <laughs> How's it going everyone? Lisa here and I hope you are having a great start to your week. So this week's episode of This Is Us titled Deja Vu, I actually didn't tear up a ton in this one. I didn't feel like it was super emotional like the last couple have been. I don't know, that could just be me, but for me it was like a one out of four on the tissue box scale. Now in this episode we get to see Sylvester Stallone and I have to say he just seems like the coolest guy around and now I'm kind of in the mood to go watch Rocky after this. We also get to dig more into Kevin and his struggles as he struggles to talk about his dad in this episode and it seems like he could definitely be heading down some kind of dark depressing path. Before getting into Kevin and Randall's struggles, let's talk about Jack and Rebecca in this episode. So we are in the timeline when the kids are teenagers and Jack is about three weeks into being sober, still attending his AA meetings, but it also seems like he's still having a hard time opening up to Rebecca. They're still not talking a lot and he seems to kind of be avoiding her. Now Rebecca seeks out some advice from Shelly, who is Miguel's ex-wife, who basically tells Rebecca that she needs to put the spice back into their relationship. So Rebecca decides, okay, I'm going to do that. I'm going to Jack Pierce. Pearson Jack and that means sweep Jack off his feet because Jack's usually one who does that kind of stuff. She surprises him with a date very much like one of their earliest and best dates and when Rebecca tries to turn up the heat in the car Jack stops her and tells her to slow down. When they return home Rebecca gets out of the car and walks towards the house because things have just been a little bit awkward and Jack stops her to apologize and tells her you know this time around kicking the problem was a lot harder than he thought. He just hasn't been in the right place the right frame of mind and he didn't want the first time Time for them in a while to be when he's feeling like how he's been feeling. So the two get back into the car to just talk some more and Jack confesses something to Rebecca. He says he had to borrow money from his dad to buy their house. He was so embarrassed he felt like he couldn't provide for his family. He then tells Rebecca there's a lot of other stuff buried away that he'll eventually tell her and Rebecca says she's ready when he is. Now after some making out they get out of the car and see a dog eating the bag of burgers Rebecca had thrown over her shoulder into the yard. And that's our introduction into the dog we saw Kate holding on to when she learns of Jack's death. Moving on to Randall, we get to see him in both his teenage years and in the present storyline. In the teenage years, Randall is once again having the urge to find his birth parents, so he secretly puts a classified ad in the paper and he does get a letter back from a woman claiming to be his mother. As the big three are walking to school, Randall tries to break away saying he has an errand, but the other two know something is up, so they walk with Randall to the park. Now Randall sits on a bench as he waits for his so-called mom as the other two keep an eye on him from afar. Eventually a woman walks up and definitely looks like she is probably drunk or strung out on something and sits down next to him saying she's his mother and she answered the ad because he said he was doing fine and didn't need any money and when she tries to ask Randall for money Randall just immediately gets up and walks away and you know tells Kevin and Kate that that's not her. Back at the house Kevin and Kate go to Randall's room to check in on him and ask why now when it comes to seeking out his birth parents. Randall explains how he just has this feeling of being alone and sometimes it's faint and sometimes it rings so loudly in his ears and he just feels like he needs to find his birth parents. In the present timeline, Randall's kind of freaking out because it's been three weeks since they've been approved to foster a child, but no one has called them. They finally end up getting a call and learn a 12-year-old girl named Deja is on her way over because her mom was just arrested. When Deja arrives, she seems kind of zoned out as the family gives her a tour of the house and Annie even gives her a drawing she made with her and the family. Deja says she just wants to go to bed, you know, she's tired, so Beth brings her a new toothbrush and when Deja goes to the bathroom, Beth starts to put Deja's things in the dresser and sees a pack of cigarettes. Deja returns to the room and starts to freak out and when Randall comes walking in asking what's going on, Deja immediately retreats and flinches like she is about to be beaten. Beth finally gets Deja to calm down and goes downstairs to talk to Randall who's kind of freaking out himself because everything's always been so easy for him. Even when people have said it's going to be really hard, he finds it pretty easy. He says that this one thing might be the thing that's as hard as everyone says it is. But don't sell yourself so short yet, Randall. Now Annie and Tess are kind of scared of Deja or the whole situation so they decided to sleep in the same room and Beth set up a baby monitor in there to keep an eye on them. The girls aren't too fond of Deja just yet as they've even asked Beth and Randall if they can return her. 
Later in the night, Deja ends up coming into Annie and Tessa's room to ask the girls who's actually in charge, Beth or Randall, and the girls essentially say it is Beth. When Deja asks what happens if you break the rules in the house, the girls say you have to sit and have a long talk about it, and then you might lose your iPad privileges, which is something that Deja is kind of unfamiliar with, as that's not what she was expecting to hear, and she kind of says, wow, this house is crazy. At that point, we get a flashback, and we get to see good old William. Turns out William also tried to sneak out the first night he stayed at the Pearson house, but he was stopped by Annie, who told him the alarm would go off if he opened the door. Annie ended up giving him the code, but then asked William to stay. But William expressed how he was scared that he's going to be bad at, you know, being around or being a dad or a grandpa. And he doesn't want to let anyone down because they seem to have such a nice family here. Little Annie then tells a story about how she went to a sleepover and got scared and came home early. And then she was sad when she got home because she knows that if she had stayed at the sleepover, she probably would have had a lot of fun. And she tells William that if he goes home, what if he's sad because he could have had fun if he stayed. Now this conversation with little Annie convinces William to stay. And of course he echoes kind of what Deja said, this house is crazy. And in all honesty though, how could you say no to this little face? Hey, can you show me how to turn on the lights in the bathroom? Yeah, you just walk in and wave your hands. Back to the present timeline, we see Annie tell Deja she can stay in their room and sleep in the reading chair if she's scared. Deja tries to pretend like she isn't, but then says, you know what, fine, but only because the bed in my room sucks. And of course, Randall and Beth are listening in on the baby monitor. So things seem like they're starting to take a turn for the better, until the next morning when Randall and Beth sit down with Deja. Now, Randall actually wins Deja over a little bit more by telling her that he sees a lot of him in her, and then he starts to tell her the story of his whole family, and William, and you know, Jack and Rebecca, and everything and how he was able to end up with a good life and an amazing family and since he sees part of him and her he has a feeling she can too that she can have a happy life now when Randall then tells Deja that her mom isn't probably coming back this time at least not for a long time because she's probably going to jail for a while Deja gets super upset and breaks the picture of William Annie and Tess she was holding and stomps upstairs now when Beth tries to go after her Randall stops her and says it's okay well Randall and Beth sure are trying but it's pretty typical here you kind of it's kind of like the you know, make a little bit of progress and then you take two steps back because there's something else that comes up and complicates everything. But you know, for Randall, who thought that he was really bad at this or was gonna be bad at this, he's actually way better than even I kind of thought he would be. He seems to definitely be connecting more emotionally than I feel like we've seen him connect with someone in a while. Let's move on to Kevin, Kate, and Sylvester Stallone. Kevin is back on set on Ron Howard's war movie and Kate has come to visit. Kate meets Sly and is pretty starstruck because we learn that Sly was basically Jack's hero. He used to watch Sly's movies with the kids all the time and it helped them get through a lot of things including when the kids were sick or even when they were happy. Now when Sly walks away after meeting Kate, Kate tells Kevin she wishes Jack was there to see this because because he'd be so proud of Kevin. And that's when we see Kevin's demeanor change when he gets kind of snappy saying, well, he can't see it, can he? And immediately kind of changes the subject. Kate later runs into Sly at craft services and tells him more about Jack. And when Sly tells her to bring, you know, her dad to set, that's when Kate has to drop the bomb saying that they actually lost her dad when they were in high school. But she just wanted to tell Sly, thank you for making her dad feel good. And then she also proves to Sly that she knows Rocky by heart. <laughs> November 25th, 1975, Philadelphia. We panned out oh, from come on. the Jesus mural. Right? It's unbelievable, when yeah. You're, when you're in the ring. You're, I'm impressed. We then see Kevin in his trailer practicing for his big monologue, and it seems like he has got that thing down pat. Meanwhile, Kate is once again chatting with Sly and actually getting some career advice from him. Now, when Kevin comes over to get ready for the scene, Sly brings up how Kate mentioned their dad and how Jack would be proud of Kevin and they should do this take for him. All of this talk of Jack now throws Kevin off a lot and he's starting to think about various times with his dad as he's starting to prep for his monologue and he ends up messing up his lines a ton of times. Mentions of Jack just really throw him off his game. When Kevin goes back to his trailer, he blows up at Kate for talking about their dad to Sly and then says, you know, why did you do that three seconds before I had my big scene? You threw me off. Kate then points out that it throws Kevin off no matter who brings up Jack or when. Kevin tries to deny this as Kate starts to open up about how she started to deal with talking about her dad when Kevin blows up at her again, calling her sad and damaged, causing Kate to walk out. As Kevin gets ready for his next scene, the scene where he rescues Sly, who they call a father figure to him in this movie. We get more flashbacks as we see 
teenage Kevin in a hospital bed after his leg injury and Jack giving Kevin his necklace. And then we see Kevin and Sophie asleep in the back of a car after what seems like a nice date night when Kate walks up to the car window completely in tears, which we're guessing is the night of Jack's death. Now, as Kevin is filming the scene and thinking about his dad and all this, he ends up hurting his knee doing a stunt. And it's the same knee he hurt as a teenager. As he's icing it in his trailer, he calls Kate to apologize and just tells her, it's hard for him to talk about Jack, and Kate says, well, maybe one day you will. Kate then looks over at Jack's ashes and says to them, he's just like you, referring to Kevin. And then back in Kevin's trailer, we see Kevin taking what seems like pills for his pain. Now the just like you line here, I think refers to more than one thing. Kevin definitely seems to keep things that are bothering him bottled deep inside. And since they pointed out the pills in this scene, maybe he also has a problem with addiction. Now, Justin Hartley has teased that Kevin will be going down a darker path this season. I'm guessing it all relates to the dad, the knee injury, and this whole pill thing could be a part of it as well. All right, so in this episode, we got to meet Beth and Randall's new foster daughter, Deja, who will definitely keep them on their toes. And we also got to learn a lot more about Kevin, which I am actually enjoying. Because when it comes to the real deep stuff here, I feel like we've only focused on Randall and Kate when it comes to that. And now we're bringing Kevin's story to the forefront. Now, I know he kind of had some little emotional moments in the first season, but nothing quite like what I feel like he's about to go through. Now let's take a look at the promo for next week. I'm not going to let this stupid knee screw up the rest of my life. Not again. Mom! What is she doing here? Did you invite her? Oh God, I'm not a masochist, Jack. Who would have thought that Randall would be the one to get into private school? What does that mean? It's been two weeks. She has to wash that hair. I know. What did she say? Your hair is nasty. She needs to apologize. You really need to back up right Look. now. Okay, so Kevin's knee injury is definitely something that is going to play a big part coming up. Now, he thinks that this knee injury screwed up his life as a teenager, and he's not going to let that happen to him again. We also get to see that Rebecca's mom's coming to town, and Randall might be getting in a fight coming up. As far as clues as to how Jack died in this episode, I don't actually think we got any new revelations, unless I missed something. You see, I wear thick glasses, so I'm kind of blind at times, and so I might have missed something. So if you picked up on anything new, definitely let me know down in the comments. Down there, you can also leave me all your thoughts on this week's episode. And are you liking season two so far? Do you think it's a little slow or do you think it's the right pace? Are you liking these kind of new storylines we're getting into? And what do you want to see happen? After that, you can click right over here to see my interview because I recently talked to Hannah, who plays teenage version of Kate on the show. And she kind of teased Rebecca and Kate's relationship. She talked about maybe singing on the show. I tried to get some hints out of her anyways. And after that, feel free to subscribe. If you like what you see, you can hit that thumbs up. I'm Lisa. Thanks for hanging out with me. I'll see y'all next time.